Colonel and Sally, a standalone western by Storyman Jack. In brown, dusty leathers, a careworn cowboy made his way into the dark saloon. His almost black boots, heels broke down, stamped hard with each foot, shaking the West Texas dust from his leathers. His once black felt hat looked brown with the red dust that blew throughout the area. There was gray in the man's hair and beard, his temples frosted by age and hard living. The leather of his face was marred by wrinkles that resembled the canyons and rutted trails in the dry West Texas desert. He walked to the bar and waited for the fat man behind it to look up toward him. Beer, he told the man. Dom, the fat man, said uninterested in the cowboy at first, his unwashed face uh, perspirated madly in the dry room, the low ceiling fans not doing much for the heavy Texas heat. The cowboy slapped a dollar bill down on the counter. Keep them coming. He looked around. You got a spare room in this shithole? The barman's grin at the dollar bill shifted to one. It looked insulted for a moment before the fat man finally shook his head. Nah, only got three rooms and they've been taken by a cattle buyer down from Boston and his entourage. He said the last with a sneer. City folk, the cowboy asked, knowing the smirk skipping across his face. The barman warmed up and smiled. You said it, buddy. Goddamn Yankees. The cowboy nodded, chuckling, and spied a low table where four men sat playing poker. Oh, I know all about them boys. Think they know more than you just because they came from the city and have what they call culture. Think I'll sit in on that, he nodded toward the card game. Well, gotta give me them irons, the bartender told him. Too many folks come in here just to sit a while and pull their guns, accusing folks of cheating. He informed the cowboy. We don't want no trouble, you know. The cowboy nodded and handed over his colts, taking a small handwritten receipt in return. Now you just give that to me or whoever's working the bar on that bill, and, and they'll give you your guns back. The cowboy nodded and retrieved a half-smoked cigar from his front shirt pocket. Lighting it and puffing it for a moment, the bartender nodded over at the table again. Slim Buck, Butch, and Junior are good sports. I didn't test none of them cheat. The barman nodded. Been here for a while. What's your name, stranger? Bragg. John Bragg, he said and walked toward the table, leaving the barman nervous and sweating by his very name. The fat, sweaty man, Sam, looked toward his shotgun sitting under the bar several times. Fellas, Cowboy said, mind if I sit in? A skinny kid of about 20 smiled from under his cards. Sure, mister. On the next hand, but you gotta know, blinds are up to 50 cents. A man who was probably Slim's older brother nodded. It's hold them. If that's too high, we can ask Butch and Junior. If they're okay with starting the blinds over, I don't care. He chuckled his mustache, looking like a caterpillar with Tourette's in that one action. That's okay, the cowboy said, sitting down. I appreciate your hospitality. And then he set his beer on the table in front of him. Well, deal you in uh, with the next hand. You want to get some chips? The one called Butch noted. Hey, Sammy, get this gent some chips. The marmon looks over and snorted. Sammy, brag assumed. How much you want, Colonel? Sam emphasized Bragg's title, eyeing eyes shifting back and forth from the men to him. None of the boys even noticed. 
Give me 20 in chips, Bragg noted, a knowing smile on his face at Sam's antics. He waited patiently for the group to finish their ham while Sam brought him his chips over, his face even sweatier than before, and then disappearing into the back without a word. After two hands went by, he waited for the last flop, decided it was time to push all his chips into the pile. Slim laughed and called the colonel. You can't beat me, colonel. You should have just passed us on by, I guess. The rough man drained his beer and nodded. You might think so. Slim nodded his, to his friends. I got this, fellas, he said, and they each in turn folded their hands. Bragg laughed. Tell you what, Slim, why don't we just put it all out here on the table, shall we? What do you say to that, boy? What do you mean, old man? Arthur James Lindsay, he paused, eyeing the boy. Or Slim to his buddies, he paused in your hand. When he was 17, he killed five people, citizens of the new list. New state of Texas on a stagecoach. It ran from Dallas to Midland. He informed the group. You've been on the run for what, three, four years, kid? I think it's time you come back and face the judge and find a little justice. That right? Buck asked. How do you know this here Slim is the man you're looking for? Well, Bragg said, rubbing his chin his whiskers sharp on his fingertips. It's said that Lindsay was last seen in the company of his brother, Michael Luke Lindsay, Bragg nodded at the boy, and some old friends, Butch Haggard and John Ramirez Jr. The cowboy took a sip of his beer, eyeing each in turn. Bragg, Bragg, why, ain't you that Union soldier? Son of a plantation owner from Louisiana. He looked around at the table as if to inform them of something extreme. Bastard went off to get some schooling up north. Come back wearing Union colors and burned his daddy plantation to ground. One told the others. Bragg grunted in affirmation. And to do it again, you can't own people, boy. Wow. Ramirez snorted. You got us all pegged, mister. But again, you got no guns. It's, it sounds like you got us pegged too. Ain't that right? Just what the hell are you gonna do? Well, see, there's not a whole lot I can do when you're talking about $1,500 bounty just for your slim over here. Bragg nodded, sipping his beer again. He took the half-smoked cigar out of his mouth, looked at it, and lit it again, puffing. Hell, and there's another 2000 for the rest of you, he shrugged. Pays to know what I'm dealing with, so I do a little research. Butch leaned back, poker game forgotten and the barkeep nowhere to be found. You expect to take us all with what? Your two fists? The cowboy laughed. Oh, I don't get nothing if you're dead, kid. So I'll do what needs doing. You got me? I'm taking you boys in. And then I'm going to take my girl to a nice steak dinner in Dallas. His voice was calm, but there was menace there, just under the surface of the false conviviality. I'd say you think a lot of yourself, mister. I mean, a man low enough to marry a house that... Butch never got to finish a word because a single, fluid motion jawed Bragg stood leaning over the table and clubbed Butch right in the head with a heavy woolen billet, wooden billet. The young man's eyes rolled up back into the back of his head even if his, as he crashed forward out of the chair from the force of the blow. The colonel spun and caught Buck in the side of his head just before he finished pulling his own gun. So much for folk turning in their irons, Bragg noted. 
One gunshot sounded from Bragg's left, but the shooter missed. He spun back to catch Junior, the little Mexican, up under his chin. He was desperately trying to aim his smoking firearm with shaking hands. But the force of John's blow lifted the kid into the air and he came down hard, back crashing the table and him both to the floor. John looked up to find Slim, his own Colt 45 in hand, hammer drawn back. His hand was steady and relaxed. It's just a matter of numbers, old man, Slim said. He looked at his boys laying cold out on the floor. Thanks for leaving me alive, I guess, he shrugged. But one of us had to get the drop on you, you know. Crack. Slim Lindsay's eyes rolled up in the back of his head, slowly falling to the floor. A figure stood behind the murderer, a wooden baton, the twin of Bragg's own, in her hand. Appreciate it, Sally, Bragg said to his wife eyeing the downed men all unconscious but one, her dark skin glistening with sweat. Well, damn it, Jenny. I ain't gonna lose $3,500 and have to stitch you up too. My mama didn't raise none of us poor children be fools. She eyed him and looked around the room. Sides, you holler like a baby looking for the tit when I try to stitch you up and don't want the headache. He looked up. Wait. Why would you have lost any money? Bragg asked her. Because I'd have had to kill a lot of them taking shots at my man. She spat down at the sl- at Slim as he ride there on the floor, holding his head. Not really out, but not really with it either. Might have hit that one too hard, though, hon. Bragg looked down at Slim, the blood pulling around the writhing body. Eh, he'll be fine. He's still moving, isn't he? Hey, Sammy, come out here and bring my man his fucking guns. And you forget you saw us, you hear? Sally ordered. You gonna get them leg irons or you want little old me to be carrying the chains into you? I can't wait to watch all the uncomfortable white folks in town shimmy around not knowing what to do with themselves as they watch little black girl walking around with chains. There's no need for that, Sally, John told her taking his back, his guns from the bartender, tossing the little bill, a piece of paper in the floor. Well, get moving. We need to chain them, tie them to the pack mules, and head, start heading back to Dallas. They'd be walking, so it going to take us a few days. He nodded and went to work. Another bounty down. Yes, dear, he said. He... I hope you enjoyed this uh, little short Western story. Um, If you did, please uh, like and share it out. uh, If you didn't, please tell me why. Tell me what could have been done better either way. Um, Again, I appreciate you and hope that you remember, as always, that your life is your story. Make it a great one. Good night.